Warning, the video you are about to watch contains footage from the DIY motion control camera robot. The following images and videos may contain ideas that are inspiring. Viewer subscription is advised. Sweet logo, bro. What's going on, zers, hers, and non-binaries? Uh, since my last video upload on the uh, motion control camera rig, there's been a ton of comments that have come in with great solutions for uh, controlling the robot, different ways you can control the robot, as well as there's been a, a few uh, questions about the accuracy and repeatability of the moves. And the over-resounding question has been, when is part two gonna come? Come on, man. This video is not part two. That video. His loyalty is to a channel. And his enemy is the deadliest machine ever created. Can it be destroyed? I know. Tutorial 2, Electronics Day. This time he's back. That video for good. is part two. But I did want to cover a couple of those comments. Um, one of the first ones, obviously, is different control solutions. So. Uh, maybe I didn't make it clear in the last video, but you actually can relatively easily use a simple remote control for jogging the machine into position. And it's actually probably one of the uh, coolest features when you're using it just by yourself, which is you can just basically comp your shot. And I got a little monitor over here. So I can just comp the shot, take a peek at it, see what it's going to look like, adjust things. I can adjust the arm, bring that up. Um, once you get your shot kind of where you want it, oh, we've got a fire engine. Somebody's dying around the corner. Come on, man. So now you've comped a different shot. I didn't even have to get up out of my chair. Um, it's freaking awesome. If you guys have seen my other videos, you know I use just a basic CNC controller and simple G code in order to manipulate the robot. And while that lacks a little bit in proper kinematics, you do get linear interpolation which is the ability to move all the access from one position to another position simultaneously. For instance, if I had my camera aiming down and in this direction, and my next waypoint was for the camera to be over here and aiming up, that move will take place simultaneously between both those axes. So despite that limitation, there's actually some really cool things you can achieve so one thing I wanted to play with was one of those time-lapse shots where you see it pan from one side of the room to the other. And that's easy to do. You just set a start position, ending position, and then tell it how long you want to take between the sweep. But the version I want is where you see multiple of the same person doing something within the same frame. And the only way you get that is to shoot multiple versions of that and then overlay them in post. And that's not difficult when the camera's mounted on the tripod because your perspective hasn't changed. But the second that camera's in motion, you have to record the exact same motion on every one of those takes or they don't overlay properly in post or it's gonna be an absurd amount of time trying to fix it and probably still not look right. So this was kind of like the first test that I tried to see if it would work. And I gotta tell you the truth, I think it looks pretty good. Um, you guys could tell me in the old comments down below what you think, but I spent minimal time in post, and this was the result. This is only a test of the accuracy using the motion control camera rig. The techniques and camera shots involved could easily be improved with proper planning and editing. Out of the 93, I woke up, drove to the store, and bought me a Dell PC. 100 megahertz processor speed, this is all you need, he said. Trust me. I opened it up. Please hold my calls cause I'm using the phone Dial up modem, analog connection 56k, 56k I hooked to the internet with my 56k modem speed And I meet all my peeps of the world wide web That's where they be and I hooked to the internet with my 56k modem speed And I meet all my peeps on the world wide web I know a lot of people are 
across the country. I moved to the internet with my 56 k Modems made a night, made all my peeps of the world wide web. That's where they be tonight. So obviously my version didn't look quite as impressive as the one filmed in Limitless. But then again, I'm not Bradley Cooper and it didn't cost me $200,000 to film that. It took about four waypoints and just a few minutes to make that sequence and then I just ran that program over and over until I was done cleaning the kitchen. And the post-production work was pretty easy as well because that camera was able to hold those moving perspectives over and over. So that last sequence actually turned out pretty well. I was hoping for a different result. I was trying to get more versions of me on screen at the same time. But that's sort of my own fault and how I programmed it. And I hit the record button like six different times, which is just enough to throw the camera out of perspective to where those images didn't line up properly in post. I could have went into After Effects and fixed them up, but I didn't want to waste the time. This was just more of a quick test to see how well the camera rig could hold its tolerance. And I was blown away at how well it did. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And for the guys building this thing, I'm sorry it's taking so long to get part two out. I've just been super busy at work. I've had a ton of projects at home that I've been working on. So be sure to hit that notification bell so you guys get uh, notified when the next video comes out.